Hi everyone, welcome to the AHEAD webinar on how to plan your vSphere 6.5 upgrade. Presented by AHEAD Senior Technical Architect, Jeremiah McGee, one of our lead subject matter experts on all things VMware. We appreciate you carving the time out of your day to participate in this important and time sensitive webinar. Before I turn things over to Jeremiah to introduce himself and kick things off, just a brief reminder on how Q&A works. We do want to hear your questions, but we'll do the Q&A at the end. If you have questions, submit them throughout using the appropriate tab on your Bright Talk page, and we'll collect them and ask them of Jeremiah at the end of the session. Okay, so without further delay, let me turn things over to Jeremiah McGee. Thanks, Tom. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Jeremiah McGee, as Tom said. Uh, I'm a VMware certified implement implementation expert uh, in vSphere 6, uh, vSAN specialist and vExpert. Uh, I've been working in technology a long time, uh, back in the late 90s, cutting my teeth on Linux and dial-up. Um, but most notably, I work with VMware products. I've worked with them for over a decade. Uh, and today, I specialize in virtual infrastructure design, uh, covering converged and hyper-converged infrastructure, core vSphere products, vSAN, Site Recovery Manager, and VMware Cloud on AWS. So our agenda for today is um, why should we upgrade to vSphere 6.5? Um, how are we going to plan this upgrade to vSphere 6.5? Um, and then I'll also tell you about what AHEAD brings to the table in this space uh, and how we go about, you know, using this vSphere Ready, this assessment, to help you with that upgrade. So why upgrade? Well, all the cool kids are doing it. Um, but, uh, of course, you know, there's not a better reason than that. It's just, you know, because it's cool and all the new features. Well. Not exactly. We never want to do an upgrade based on just cool features alone. Um, so there's a little bit more, you know, reasoning behind why we should do this upgrade. So today, there's kind of this like impending doom hanging over us. Um, vSphere 5.5 is end of general support on September 19th, 2018. So what does that mean for you guys? It's 155 days from today. Um, that's five months. And so I don't know about you guys, but trying to uh, figure out the plan, uh, figure out what we're doing, how to plan this upgrade, and then implement this upgrade in five months, that's a, a very short period of time to kind of get everything all together and get the ball rolling and get it done before this support lifecycle ends. So, so the first reason with why we're upgrading and, and the end of general support, uh, what does this mean, the end of general support? What this means is that all the products you see here on the screen are going to be end of support. Um, so that's, you know, ESXi, uh, vCenter 5.5, vCenter Heartbeat, uh, Nexus 1000V, vSAN. Um, and then in addition to that, Cell Recovery Manager, uh, vSphere Data Protection, and vSphere Replication, both the 5.5 and the 5.8 versions will also be end of support at this time. So does this mean they're going to stop working? No, it doesn't mean they're going to stop working, but what it means is that if you have a problem and you have to call support, you're not going to like we hear on the other end of the phone. Uh, they're going to say, hey, you know, it's not in support. Uh, you need to upgrade. You know, we're, we're not officially supporting this product at this time. Um, you know, if you get a really nice engineer, they might try to do a couple of things with you to kind of help you out, but for the most part, they're going to want you to upgrade. Um, additionally, I don't know if you know this or not, but today, um, uh, it's April 17th, so today, uh, vSphere 6.7 uh, officially became available to the public. Um, so what that means for you guys is that if you're on 5.5, you're officially three versions behind uh, with 5.5. So if you kind of put that into perspective, it's like if you're running Windows 8, not 8.1, but just Windows 8 on your laptop, you definitely don't want to do that. And I'm kind of kidding a little bit. We definitely don't want to compare vSphere 5.5 to Windows 8. It's not really fair to vSphere, but, uh, you know, just to kind of put it into perspective of what that looks like. So three versions is a lot. And, you know, 5.5, very stable. Um, it's been very stable. It's been going on for a long time. Everybody loves it. Um, but it's kind of time to retire that. So I'm not going to go into the details of vSphere 6.7 in this webinar. That's for another one uh, that we may do. But in the meantime, 
Um, one thing you should know, you know, that's relevant to this is that coming from vSphere 5.5, .5, uh, you can't upgrade directly to 6.7. And so this is even more important because um, if you need to upgrade, you actually have to go to vSphere 6.0 or 6.5 first, and then you can go to 6.7. And so uh, when you start planning your upgrade, you want to plan accordingly to that if you want to go to 6.7. So, you know, if you can't upgrade, there's various reasons for that. Um, you might be stuck on a certain hardware platform. You may be stuck in some kind of critical situation where um, you're not readily available to make the decision to upgrade. Um, you're stuck on something else, you know, as far as that is concerned. Um, but, you know, you can still buy support. Now, do you want to buy support? No, not necessarily. Um, you know, it, it costs extra money. Um, you know, there, there's a lot that kind of goes into it. And really, you're paying extra just for the option of saying, hey, um, I want to continue using this old product, which we definitely don't want to do. So, you know, you could upgrade, you could pay the money, but I would rather see everybody invest their money into, you know, more hardware, more product you know, more features, things like that. And so we have, you know, vSphere 6.0 and vSphere 6.5. They're both end of general support uh, in the future. So 6.0 is in 2020, 6.5 and 6.7 um, are actually have the same date. So it'd be, you know, November 15th of 2021. Um, and so that's kind of how that life cycle matrix kind of rotates through. Uh, going beyond that, you know, you've got X amount of times, so you'll have September 19th, 2020, um, when that extended support for vSphere 5.5 ends, and then you really have to, to to give it up and move on to the next thing, the next product level. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure that, you know, if you do need to purchase support for some reason, you know, th those are kind of the dates and kind of the, the figures that go into that. But again, we should upgrade if, if absolutely, you know, if we, if we can, absolutely. So why do we want to upgrade besides getting to the newest version? So there's a lot of benefits to this upgrade, and, and this is based on 6.5, not 6.0. We, we want to kind of skip over 6.0 since 6.5 has been out for quite a while, very stable. So, um, you know, we've got our top benefits of why we want to upgrade. So first of all, we have a simplified customer experience. Uh, simplified architectures, pro, uh, proactive data center management, built-in security, and of course we have VMware Cloud on AWS, and other public cloud functionality. Now these are kind of like the five bullets to, you know, at least in my opinion, on why, you know, why we want to upgrade to vSphere 6.5. There's many other reasons, um, but we can spell these out a little bit here. So the first reason, you know, talking about simplified customer experience, we have the HTML5 vSphere client. We have appliance management and monitoring, and we have SIP deprecation. And, you know, a lot of these matter because, you know, various things didn't work right. You know, if you had Flash, you had to use the Flash client in the old versions. Um, the, the SIP client was part of that Flash client. Um, you know, so there's various things there. Co companies are trying to block Flash for, you know, for security purposes, different things like that. And so moving to an all HTML5 client, you know, really is, you know, what you should be using today, what customers should be using, and, you know, kind of moving off of that Flash makes it easier to manage for everybody else as well, the administrators. Um, visibility into the appliance and management um, of that appliance, uh, you know, is far better than trying to manage those services of vCenter and things like that on the Windows server. And then of course the, the SIP deprecation, which was the plugin that allowed the Flash client to function properly and allow you to upload files and, and deploying OVAs and different things like that. And so that's no longer needed anymore. Everything kind of works through HTML5 and through the browser um, and you don't have to worry about any of that, that stuff. So then we have our, our simplified architecture. And simplified architecture, you know, comes with, uh, you know, the database being embedded now. So if you're using the appliance, you're using embedded PostgreSQL. Um, you have VMware Update Managers now embedded. And so what that does is it allows you to get rid of those Windows servers, get rid of those Windows licenses, um, get rid of that SQL license. Let's pull everything into the vCenter. Now you don't have to deploy a separate Update Manager server, things like that. And so 
now everything's running on this on this vCenter server appliance, which is uh, scales and performs phenomenally better than the Windows platform. And so that's how we talk about our simplified architecture is kind of bringing those services all together where, you know, if you think about by five, you always wanted to kind of separate those services out. And we see a lot of customers that have, you know, two or three servers and their services are spread all across them. And, and that's a you know a standard practice. And so this kind of brings you away from that and gets you back to a single appliance. And then we have proactive data center management. So proactive HA, um, predictive DRS, vCenter high availability, these features allow you to keep uptime. They allow you to, you know, be proactive rather than, rather than reactive with regards to hardware going down or workloads coming under contention or vCenter services failing and, you know, having to troubleshoot, you know, hey, why is my vCenter down and things like that. And we have our built-in security. So we're talking about VM encryption, we're talking about encrypted vMotion, anybody that has to be HIPAA compliant or, um, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley compliant or SIP compliant, anything like that, anything that's um, critical, confidential, you know, we can encrypt all of that now uh, with vSphere 6.5. We have actionable logging. So now when a change is made to a, a virtual machine, you can clearly see in the logs who made that change. Um, you know, it's not just going to say that a system process made that change. And then going into the public cloud, you know, we have VMware Cloud on AWS. So we have, um, not only do we have enhanced linked mode between vCenters that are on-prem, but now we have hybrid linked mode that connects us back to our vCenter instance within VMware Cloud on AWS. So, so now you can get that single pane of glass and see your workloads in both environments and manage those workloads and migrate workloads between them. So let's talk about planning the upgrade. So, you know, previous versions, just next, next finish, right? I mean, how many times has that been successful versus it's failed? Uh, I don't know if I want to answer that. Sometimes it was really easy and sometimes it wasn't, but um, next, next finish is never, is never the case at the upgrade. In this particular case, uh, it, it's not either. So we want to plan this out um, appropriately and we want to kind of look at the design process. So overall, we want to, you know, gather our business and technical requirements. You know, what, what do we have to do? What needs to happen? from a business perspective, you know, do we need certain SLAs? Do we need certain high availability? Do we need certain features? And then from a technical requirements as well, you know, what are we doing with our VMs? Are there workloads that are sensitive? Different things like that. So we want to kind of gather up all those requirements. Um, and we want to determine the critical success factors. So what does it look like when we do this upgrade? What makes it successful? What, what key things make this upgrade a success to not only us, you know, our technical crew, our managers, our executives, you know, what, what does that look like and, and how can we achieve that? And then identity uh, or identify uh, dependencies and use cases. So are we doing, you know, automation? So kind of like on-prem, uh, you know, roll your own services and applications. Are we doing uh, virtual desktops? Are we doing, you know, anything else in the environment that would warrant us to take a look at the overall vSphere infrastructure and determine, you know, what's going to happen. Do we have, you know, like I said, critical applications, anything that requires kind of, you know, a white glove treatment or kind of just a change in architecture or a change in thought process. We want to kind of identify that stuff and then figure out, you know, okay, what are we going to do with our architecture? How are we going to design around this to make sure that this, you know, is valid when we're done? Let's look at um, a design, you know, to design a solution that meets all of that stuff, all of the business technical requirements, um, you know, to make it successful, to incorporate all of the use cases, whether, you know, they're present or future use cases, uh, you know, we want, definitely want to future proof in that design. And then we're going to deploy that solution based on the design that we came up with. And then we have to validate the solution against all the divine criteria and go back and check off the boxes. You know, did we meet the business and technical requirements? Did we meet, you know, did we meet all those critical success factors? Are all of our use cases going to function appropriately? you know, after this is all done. So then we talk about, you know, going from the design aspect to planning the upgrades. We have to do a full technical discovery. Let's, let's dig in, you know, do a full assessment of our environment. We have to understand, you know, what additional VMware products are in use, what third party products are in use and are using, you know, the vCenter environment or vCenter as an endpoint. So monitoring backups, um, third party virtual switches like Nexus 1000V, um, you know, service now, anything that ties into it, we need to kind of know everything that's touching that vCenter environment. 
and we'll pull a, we'll perform a full health assessment. We don't want to go into an upgrade with problems in the environment. So we perform that whole ass health assessment, get a report out of it, and start looking through and seeing, you know, what's healthy and what's unhealthy. You may, you know, go through your days and your weeks and your months and not have any problems, but then this uh, health assessment will look and say, hey, you have potential problems here that you didn't know about, and so we want to fix those. Then we want to look at performing a, a physical hardware assessment and making sure that the hardware is is fully supported and we want to look at the servers we want to look at the storage you know the storage arrays um, the network look at everything that's involved in touching that you know get kind of take an inventory version you know software versions different things like that and, and note that all down so then what we do is we have to analyze all this we analyze the data we found in that technical discovery we want to validate all the hardware against the hardware compatibility list we want to look at the software, the driver versions, the firmware versions. You know, there's been a lot of changes to that hardware compatibility list, and, and servers that are running 5.5 today can't necessarily run 6.0 or 6.5 tomorrow. Uh, those firmware versions change too, and with those firmware versions comes, you know, driver discrepancies and different things like that. And so we kind of have to look at that full stack um, to make sure that it's all going to work with uh, vSphere 6.5. Then we want to address any of those issues or configurations that we found in the health analysis. Anything that pops up, you know, we can prioritize and look through it and determine if it's necessary or if it's unnecessary um, and clean that all up prior to the upgrade. Then we look at all the products that we have and we make sure that they that they can operate together. You know, if you've got other third party products or if you have other VMware products, you know, you want to make sure that you know, your vRealize operations manager is still going to function and give you the reports that you need when you upgrade to 6.5. If not, we have to upgrade vRealize operations manager. Um, same thing with third-party products. Um, had a customer recently that had a pretty current version of SolarWinds, and we determined that that wasn't supported with 6.5. They had to do an upgrade of SolarWinds so they could make, keep monitoring their environment, making sure it was healthy after the fact. Um, you know, so we check through all of that and we check through all of the third party, all of the current VMware products and kind of roll through that. So then you want to, you know, decide, hey, should I get off my Windows vCenter now or later? And I'm going to say now. You always want to get, you know, move to the appliance at this point. Um, performance, scalability, features, future proofing, it's all there. It all outperforms the Windows platform. It's all easier to manage. Um, you know, it's a simplified architecture and it's, you know, you don't, you're not going to use an external database anymore. So it's going to make that a lot easier. Uh, it all runs on Photon OS. It all runs HTML5. Um, it's blazing fast. And with 6.7 coming or out today, uh, that is the last version that's going to support not only the Windows platform, but also um, the Flash client. So after this version today, 6.7, the next version isn't going to support any of that. So just be aware, um, you know, that that's, that's kind of the future direction. So we, when we're planning through the upgrade, we want to read everything. We want to really read the product release notes, the product documentation, upgrade guides, compatibility guides, interoperability matrices, KB articles, third-party product guides. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of little nuances and caveats that you don't realize that are there that will cause you problems during and after the upgrade. Like Spectre Meltdown, for example, you know, you want to know which patches to apply and what order you want to apply them, things like that. So when we plan the upgrade, um, there's a certain way we have to do everything. And so, you know, if if you have two separate SSO domains, which is traditional, you know, you've got uh, vCenter and data center A, vCenter and data center B, there are typical installs. We want to consolidate those domains if you're using enhanced linked mode. So we're going to consolidate those domains. Um, you know, once we consolidate those domains, we're going to go ahead and migrate everything and upgrade everything from the single sign-on server to a platform services controller. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and migrate and upgrade our vCenter servers. After that, we'll upgrade our VMware and third-party products. So any other VMware products that you have, there's a certain order in which you have to upgrade them in prior to getting to ESXi 6.5. So going through that, going through your third-party products, making sure those are upgraded in the proper order. Then we update our BIOS and firmware for our ESX host, upgrade our hypervisor to 6.5. Then we upgrade our VM tools and our virtual hardware, which is really, um, you know, critical for, for Spectre. And then, and then finally we upgrade our storage. 
So you can see there's a lot that goes into it. And so this is where a head shines in, in this aspect. Let us do it so you can go play hooky. You can go to the beach if it's nice and sunny where you are. Here, it's not so sunny. It's, 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 it's pretty cold. But, uh, you know, going, you know, let us do it for you so that you can work on other projects. You can go on vacation. You can do whatever you need to do. And this is what, this is what uh, myself and my team do on a, on a very regular basis. So ahead, we are best in breed for VMware partnership. We've been global partner of the year for cloud infrastructure. Um, you know, America solution provider of the year. Uh, you know, we, we get awards all the time for virtualization and cloud technologies. We're cited for innovation and technical expertise. Um, we're part of the partner technical advisory board where we get to go sit with the engineers and the people that, you know, uh, own the product and, and give them our feedback, give them our customers feedback and talk to them about what's working and what's not working. Um, we were one of the first of uh, four solutions providers to be on Project Lighthouse, which was the beta for VMware Cloud on AWS. And uh, I'm sure this number is low, 750 plus uh, VMware solution implementations. Um, you know, we, we've done so many uh, implementations of every VMware product you can think of um, that it's unbelievable. So today we are um, we have our partner solution competencies as a VMware partner. We have almost every single one of them. Um, I think we're missing maybe one, and it's an old one, so I don't even know that it, that it counts anymore. But, uh, you know, we are competent in every solution that VMware offers. We have 11 V experts. Uh, between everybody uh, that works in the virtualization space, we have over 250 technical certifications. Uh, you know, four VCIXs, three VCDXs, and a double VCDX. So we have a lot of expertise uh, and a lot of experience to, to back up, you know, our services and how we can help you. Which brings us to our VSA readiness assessment. So all of the things that we just went over, all the things we went through, um, it's a lot of stuff. And I, I kind of read through it fast for you, and I kind of, you know, kind of put some things into perspective for you. Um, but it, it's a challenging and daunting task, especially if you're on your own or you have a small team, um, or even if you have a big team, but you have so many projects, you don't have time to really put forth the, the level of detail that needs to be put into the assessment. So our service delivery team comes out and we can do a number of things. Uh, so what we do is first when we want to do this assessment is we'll do an education workshop. So we'll come on site with you. We will uh, facilitate a workshop to educate you on the new features. We'll do a whole vSphere 6.5 deep dive. Um, and then we'll give you an overview of the readiness assessment. And, uh, you know, we'll talk through all of the different options and all the different details. And, and you know, we can answer all of your questions and, and based on design and everything else. And uh, during that workshop, we'll also whiteboard out what your current infrastructure looks like, what your pain points are, you know, what problems and challenges do you have, or what works really well for you that you don't want to see changed. And then we'll come in, we'll do a technical discovery of that uh, environment, and we will analyze everything. We use partner tools and some homegrown tools, and we come in and we and we and, uh, check out, you know, the hardware. We check out. Um, you know, your drivers, your, you know, firmware, your everything that's touching it, all of your endpoints, we look at everything, you know, from the the bare metal hardware all the way up through all the solutions, all the configurations in between, and and, and we kind of come back and, and check all that out. And we do this in a we do this analysis for you where we when we check everything out, you know, we kind of go through it with a fine tooth comb and we make sure that okay, we call out any issues, um, any problems that we see, any configuration issues, things that you know, may, you may be want to want to be aware of, but aren't necessarily problems. Um, we check out all the hardware, make sure everything's compatible, um, and kind of go through that whole entire thing for you so you don't have to. And then we bring it all back and we do this readiness assessment workshop for you. So we kind of just go over everything that we already did, right? We go over, you know, your, your current state environment. We go over the technical analysis and the reports and everything that we found, and then we, um, Talk, talk to you about what your desired state looks like and, and how to get there. And we and we give you a high level actionable plan and we call it any problems or risks with that plan and, and kind of leave you with a nice, you know, peace of mind that you've got all this information and documentation and, and you can go forth and, you know, do this upgrade and feel confident that it's going to be successful. 
Do we have any questions about what we have right now? Yeah, Jeremiah, so it's Tom here. We did have a few questions come in, and I'd encourage um, those on the line, if you have more questions, use the, um, the, uh, the Q&A tab off to the right of your screen. So two questions came in around cost, Jeremiah. What are, what are the drivers of cost, and how much does a typical upgrade cost? So the so as far as cost is concerned, it depends on the size of the environment. So when we when you come to us and and say, hey, we want this readiness assessment, or hey, we want an upgrade, um, you know, we look at a couple of different things, and we look at you know what's the size of your environment, how many solutions do you have in place today? Um, there's a number of factors. Then we have a cost wrapped around that. You know, obviously. Um, an environment that, say, you know, one vCenter and 10 hosts is going to be substantially um, cheaper than, you know, an environment that has 10 vCenters and 1,000 hosts, right? And so um, the, the cost is very dynamic. Um, so, you know, what, what I would say is, you know, talk to us, you know, reach out to us, let us know what your environment size is, and we can, we can put something together for you that you can take back and, and you know, see if you have budget for it. Okay, and then the uh, second question, Jeremiah, around the, the health or readiness assessment you described, what kind of tools do you use in conducting that assessment in case people, you know, want to try to go it alone or? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we do use some tools that are kind of um, accessible to the public. So, you know, we'll do like RV tools just to kind of get an overall inventory. Um, you know, we, if you use VROPS, you know, we'll definitely use uh, VROPS dashboards and reporting. And we'll use some of the stuff that's public and accessible to everybody. But then we also have a lot of partner tools that we use. So, um, you know, we, uh, we'll use the, the VMware Health Analyzer from VMware. Um, we'll use a, um, a, a number of other tools from VMware, uh, like an optimization appliance that they have. Um, it's kind of like VROPS, except for it's more fine-tuned with its reporting and its dashboards. Um, and then we've got some homegrown tools and some other things that we use that kind of really get in and pull information for us, you know, so we, we can go in and, and pull and do a full, like, health analysis report within minutes of, uh, like, your UCS environment or something like that. And so we have a bunch of tools that we have that are either partner tools or, or homegrown tools that, um, you know, the public might not necessarily have access to, and I think that's what gives us the edge to really do a comprehensive uh, analysis of that environment. Okay. Thanks. Um, just two more. Uh, one is um, a very pointed question around Nexus 1000V, I think it is. Is it still supported or will it be supported in vSphere 6.5? What's the, the status there? Uh, yeah, so Nexus 1000V is, is technically still supported uh, in vSphere 6.5. Um, especially as of update one, which is current today. Um, but update one is that key. So when update two comes out, which which I think uh, is is coming out soon, um, once update two comes out, it will no longer be supported. And so we're encouraging customers and VMware is encouraging customers that if you're making the move from 5.5 to 6, um, you know, even in 6, it's still supported. But 6.5 while it's still supported, it's it's we're really recommending to move off of it to the normal uh, distributed switches. So, um, you know, in that analysis, when we see that you have Nexus 1000V, uh, we'll also recommend how to migrate off of the 1000V. VMware has a tool to do it. Um, we have our own method of doing it as well. Sometimes we use the tool, sometimes we use a different method. It depends on how the Nexus was deployed in the environment. Um, but yeah, we, we would always recommend moving off the 1000V uh, while you're still on 5.5 prior to moving to the next version. Okay, thanks, Jeremiah. And the last one I think is a good uh, kind of capstone question on the session. So you mentioned you, you've obviously spent a lot of time upgrading uh, some of Ahead's VMware clients. What are maybe the top, you know, three pain points or roadblocks that you've encountered that uh, that our attendees should be aware of? Yeah, so um, it's it's always it's always interesting, and every customer has their challenges. But um, I'd say that the top one, the the primary one, is change control. Um, a lot of times, uh, they don't anticipate, you know, the length of time something takes, or if there's like an internal process that says you have to have change control submitted X amount of time before the change happens. You know, so some of these. It's it's pretty easy going, you know. Uh, you know, as long as it's a few days before, it's okay. But we have other ones that we've run into where they want like four or five, six weeks of you know lead time for change control to happen and be approved before 
the upgrade can happen. And if they miss that window, then it extends out another X amount of time. Um, so I would just say, you know, be aware of what your change windows look like and what your change control process is. And we would talk about it, you know, in the education meeting. That way we can plan for something like that and make sure that everybody's on the ball. Um, so I'd say that's one of the biggest pain points. Um, one of the other pain points that we have during upgrades is customers that have um, upgraded their environment over the years. And so we've had, most people have, have um, upgraded since, you know, 5.1, you know, something like that. Um, but we see, we still see a number of customers that had, you know, version 3.0, um, or I had a customer that had a 2.5 vCenter and they've upgraded that vCenter every version up until 5.5. And so um, those become challenges because every time you do that upgrade, you're changing things in the database and you're changing other things with the vCenter. And, you know, they're, they're rarely successful in that case. And that's good information to know going into the planning exercise because then, you know, we can plan for that and say, yeah, we're going to try to migrate you, but here's our plan B. If the migration isn't going to work for some reason, um, you know, we can, we can deploy a new one and have a, a plan of moving things over into the new vCenter. So um, that's another big one is just kind of the age of that vCenter and what that looks like. Um, and then some of the other pain points, um, you know, they're, they're kind of random. It just depends, you know, some of it's hardware, you know, um, actually I'd say that's probably the third, the third one is hardware in that, um, you know, if you've got like, you know, you know, G G sevens on your HP servers, or you've got like M twos or something for your Cisco servers, or you've got some older hardware that still totally functions fine. Um, you know, and, and for your environment, what you need to do and, and, and your workloads, it functions just fine. But going to 6.5, that hardware isn't supported anymore. Um, and so then it becomes a question of, okay, well, you're on 5.5 and you got this older hardware, but it's not going to be supported um, and potentially can't even install ESX on it. Um, so then we have to look at, you know, hey, do you need to make a hardware purchase? You know, can can we help you with that? Can we uh, make recommendations for you? Do you? You know, we can kind of go through that process of what that looks like. But, yeah, hardware is, is the next biggest um, just because of, you know, if, if you're on 5.5 and you haven't really upgraded your hardware, you know, over the past three, four years, you could get into that gray area where the hardware that you're on isn't supported any longer. Okay, great. Well, that's all the questions we had from the uh... – the audience, Jeremiah. So thanks everyone for asking those questions and thank you, Jeremiah, for your insights. Uh, everyone, please be on the lookout for some follow-up material, including our complimentary 6.5 upgrade planner to be published very soon. And of course, you can learn more about our company ahead at thinkahead.com. We look forward to hearing from you and thanks again for your time.